I'm holding these keys in my womb, in my womb, in my womb. I'm holding these keys in my womb, in my womb, in my womb. I'm holding me. Hello, dear women. And I'm continuing talking about the most fascinating organ that we have is our womb. The first post I made on my website was a text post, but I think sharing through video has much better effect. In a way, uterus is an independent organ. She stands out from all other organs. And for example, in Chinese medicine, many of you heard about the meridians of organs. So we have kidneys, liver, spleen, heart and lungs. These are five yin organs and they have five yang organs and together they work as an equilibrium and all of them they have their own meridians but the uterus is not included in these organs. Why? Because it is considered to be an extraordinary organ. They are called extraordinary organs for the reason that they are very different from the five that I have mentioned. So the five organs are considered to be post-heaven organs. It means that they are active after our birth, which is called the post-heaven. And energy circulates in the post-heaven meridians. The pre-heaven, the before birth meridians circulate also the energy, but they are active when we are in our mother's womb. These are eight extraordinary vessels or meridians. They are not related to any organs, but interestingly, the uterus uses two of extraordinary meridian in order to function and receive vitality. So indeed, the way I perceive my womb is she is so extraordinary. And it means that I need to take care of her in a very special way. So when we look at the location of the uterus, she sits exactly between large intestine and the bladder. So it's kind of they are neighboring her and supporting her to stay in the place. But this support can become harmful if the health of digestion, the large intestine, and the kidneys is disrupted. So that's why women feel when there is something happening with the reproductive organs, it always involves digestion and urinating. So bladder and large intestine are supporting the uterus from the sides, from the front and from the back. And beneath the uterus, what do we have? We have a complicated network of muscles, tendons and ligaments, which all together is called the pelvic floor. But all of this soft floor beneath the uterus is actually not enough to provide a solid foundation for this organ. Because if you look at the bone structure of the pelvis, we have a hole or a pelvic brim beneath. So basically it means that there is no solid support. This brim allows the fetus to pass during the labor. The womb is challenged to hold herself in the space of the pelvis. Uterus herself has an extra tool to hold on to the neighbor tissues. This is called the broad ligament. And I really like this tissue. It reminds me of like widespread wings of a bird. This ligament is attaching itself to the sides of the pelvis and in a way, the uterus is hanging there in the pelvis. That's why the uterus is also considered to be a suspensive organ. She is just floating there and we really need to provide an extra support to the uterus. So how do we do it? 
actually I want to tell you what creates pressure on the uterus because this is more common in women the lifestyle and the actions that we do everyday life actually create the pressure on this organ first of all lifting heavy objects has a very negative impact on this very fragile suspensive organ so women lift things at home they lift things in the gym and mothers they continue carrying their child for an extended period of time while the child already can walk so this is something you can stop doing and be very mindful second this area the pelvic area needs to be kept in warmth women should not sit on cold surfaces like ground or stone or keep their feet cold and some women don't even feel it but the body will absorb the dampness and the coldness into the bones and the organs and as a result the uterus becomes cold the menstruation becomes really heavy because the blood clothes in the cold condition and when it's warm blood is flowing and if you think of it womb is a place to grow a child so we want to keep the child in very warm conditions this transmits that the uterus itself needs to be always warm plus the digestive fire in the belly gives us a hint that digestion happens only in a very warm environment that's why sometimes eating cold food or eating too many salads is not healthy for your stomach so your belly and your pelvis need to be really warm and it's very interesting fact that in ancient Taoism women with cold womb were considered to be vampires so for a man to have an intercourse with such woman was completely loss of vital energy because if her uterus is cold it means she does not take care of herself her body is stiff rigid and immobile while it was considered that a woman with warm uterus is like a candle wax she's very soft flexible and calm now let's look into the next genital organs of woman are built in the horizontal line horizontal lines symbolize femininity while vertical lines symbolize masculinity so our genitals both men's and women's are built in this way so look at this the vulva and the uterus of women are parallel to the earth that's why woman is also an earthy human being while man's organs whether it's in passive state or erected state is perpendicular to the earth that's why it also transmits into the psychosomatic behavior of men and women women they are grounding and they are nesting and men are always taking somewhere off and running so due to this fact that woman's organs are parallel to the ground and the uterus is a suspensive organ there is an extra pressure on this organ first there is a constant pull of gravity from below and women can sense this gravity more during menstruation sometimes women cannot stand for a long period of time they feel as if there is a pool and it's very discomfortable so they want to sit down this is amazing because for me it means that women actually know on a cellular level what is gravity isn't it amazing so we have gravity below and then above the womb we have stacked all the organs and skeleton basically the whole torso and the head and arms just pressing on the uterus 
So to release this constant pressure, it is recommended for a woman from time to time to take about 5 to 10 to 15 minutes to lay down. And this is not a passive laying down, talking to somebody or holding your phone in your hands. This is an active uterus release. It means that when you're laying down, you reduce the gravitational force from the body and you can shift your focus to your pelvis and through your breath send relief and relaxation. And it is very nice to do this few times a day. When my day is very active, between my tasks, I take five minutes to just lay down and ground. And it's really... And the best effect is if you are laying actually on the floor. Then you really give your body to the earth so the gravity can neutralize all the pressure and distribute the energy along the body. <laughs> so remember again, don't lift heavy things. Keep yourself warm and cozy. And stop running all day long on your feet. Take a short break and rest your pelvis to neutralize the gravitational force pressure. This is all for today and stay tuned for more delicious information about the most extraordinary organ in the human body. Thank you!